Any and any hater who is, and you'll never have a hater that's doing better than you. Always know that. Don't get off the wall to dress some pity any boy who ain't got shit going for himself. Now you done stopped your climb up on the wall so you can come down here and talk to his little punk Don't do that, man. I, 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 I stay away from it. Now, do I want to? Yes. Because I'm a human being and I'm hood. I used to be a fighter and I still got hands. They slow, but if you get up on me real close, I can still knock your one head. God damn, I look motherfucking good. Eating you up. I'm talking about eating you just when he thought the drama couldn't get any juicier, 50 Cent is back in the headlines, and this time it's got everyone talking. First, he's getting crazy with Drake, then making moves with Tyler Barry, and now, Steve Harvey? And it's not just any collaboration. Steve recently reignited the beef with Cat Williams, even threatening to knock him out. You already knew Cat wasn't about to let that slide without a fight. Fans are majorly side-eyeing 50 like never before. Some say he's a hypocrite, others claim he's sold out, and we're here to break it all down. Is 50 Cent the new gatekeeper Cat Williams warned us about? Stick around because things are about to get messy. 1. Steve Harvey So remember when Cat Williams set the internet on fire with his explosive interview on Club Shay Shay, roasting Steve Harvey like never before? Well, in the immediate aftermath, Steve acted like he was totally unfazed brushing it off like Cat's words were nothing. But guess what? Turns out, Steve wasn't as cool and collected as he pretended to be. In a shocking twist, Steve just threatened to knock Cat out if he so much as steps out of line again. The Family Feud host went all in with spitting every insult in the book towards Cat at InvestFest 2024, which left the audience stunned. Now, while Steve Harvey didn't exactly name drop, he wasn't exactly subtle either, repeatedly calling his target little and short. Gee, wonder who that could be. He kicked off his rant by justifying why he kept quiet after being publicly dismissed. And trust me, he didn't hold back. He said, Cause lions don't turn around when small dogs are barking, and I don't. And then he continued. Any, any hater who is, and you will never have a hater that's doing better than you. Always know that. Don't get off the wall to dress some pity any boy who ain't got shit going for himself. Now you done stopped your climb up on the wall so you can come down here and talk to his little punk Don't do that, man. I, 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 I stay away from it. Now, do I want to? Yes. Because I'm a human being and I'm hood. I used to be a fighter and I still got hands. They slow, but if you get up on me real close, I can still knock your one head. Now, it just might be me, but it looks like Steve Harvey has really been affected by Cat's expose, but he kept all of this anger in. You see, this is the same man who claimed that he was above addressing his haters. I wonder what happened to that spirit. For those who are out to the loop here, Steve Harvey was actually reacting to Cat quite immediately when Cat dropped that blockbuster interview. But his stance was completely different at that time. In a January 7 X post, Harvey told the audience that he never needs to explain themselves to haters. He said, No, you ain't gotta tell nobody nothing. All you gotta do is be it. You don't have to open your mouth. He prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. He do it all the time. All my haters, I got nothing to say to them. They got TV, they can cut their TV on seven days a week. All that hate, man, he on there. But Steve didn't stop there. The former talk show host doubled down, claiming that the only reason he gets haters is because he's just that good at what he does. And if that wasn't enough, Steve took a step further, suggesting that these so-called haters are actually sent by the devil himself, trying to block the path God has set for you towards greatness. Bold words, right? But here's the thing. Fans are convinced Steve was taking a not-so-subtle jab at Cat Williams. God is about to do something, and the devil is throwing in opposition. He stated before addressing someone who is really attacking me right now, though he doesn't drop a name. I got somebody really attacking me right now. I mean, really going after me, man. I'm just waiting to see what God's going to do because they're going to have to get on. Can't nobody stop what God got for you. But no matter what Steve Harvey says, fans can't help but focus on one glaring thing he didn't say. He never called Kat a liar. If Steve thought this clapback was going to be iconic, he might want to think again. Because all it did is highlight that it took him a whole seven months to cook up a response to Kat's explosive allegations. And let's be real, taking that long to clap back only makes Kat's claims seem even more credible. 
Understandably, the word got to Cat and his reply was as savage as his diss. Cat promptly responded to his Instagram story with a meme saying, Yeah, Steve. God damn, I look mother good. Eating you up. I'm talking about eating you up. Two, Cat Williams. For a quick refresher, Cat didn't hold back when he went in hard on several prominent black actors and comedians in Hollywood during his interview on Club Shay Shay. But he saved his most brutal digs for Steve, calling him a country pumpkin black dude that can't talk well and looks like Mr. Potato Head. Ouch. And that's not all. Cat also dragged Steve for being bald, accusing him of stealing an idea from Mark Curry to pass off as his own, and claimed that he destroyed Steve in a comedy battle. Now with shots fired like that, no wonder Steve took seven months to fire back. Cat claimed, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost. Because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wink. And I went in. And that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. And Cat didn't stop there. He went even further by making some bold claims about the origins of Steve's hit show, The Steve Harvey Show. According to Cat, Steve didn't come up with the idea himself at all. He insinuated that Steve snatched it from someone else and just took the credit where it was not due. Cat also accused Steve of being jealous of the late Bernie Mac, claiming Steve was against Bernie when he was alive, but wasted no time stealing Bernie's whole style the moment he passed away. And that wasn't all. Cat slammed Steve for allegedly swiping jokes from Mark Curry and passing them off as his own. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had, now Steve's got a sitcom where he's the principal and he wears a suit. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you asked him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. Cat pulled no punches, calling Steve a talentless fraud, who used to go around saying he wasn't interested in becoming a movie star. But according to Cat, the real story was that nobody wanted Steve in their movies because he was just a Bernie Mac wannabe who didn't have a drop of talent. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good old Bukabe and look like Mr. Potato Head. Now, you might have noticed that Cat Williams isn't plastered all over mainstream media like Steve Harvey is. Cat's absence is a coincidence. It's actually by design. For those of you who haven't been keeping up, Cat has been grinding in the shadows, working with huge media platforms like HBO and Netflix. But here's the kicker. This partnership was never blasted across headlines. Why? Because Cat isn't exactly playing nice with these so-called elites. You might be thinking, wait, if these media giants recognized his talent, why was Cat pushed to the back of the stage? Well, the man himself dropped some major hints about this during an interview with V103 Radio in Atlanta. He didn't hold back, straight up laying out the truth, claiming the bias against him was intentional. I'm proud of your success, but f nigga, look. <laughs> Better stop telling people that my lies before you be somewhere and meet one of my guys. I have the top two comedy specials on Showtime, HBO, and Comedy Central. They don't promote it or sell the items after they come out because I own them lock, stock, and barrel. You see, Williams had always been skeptical of Steve's sudden success to the point that back in 2009, he boldly challenged him to a duel of words at the New Year's Eve performance, the two comics co headlined he said, I want to apologize for what's going on, but the second you get on stage, I need you to understand that your final time as the god of comedy, water seeks its own level. And you can't stop it, playboy. It is what it is. So I hope you're ready. I hope you got a team of writers. You need about six or seven of them. But as expected, Steve Harvey tried to play it cool. Days before the showdown, he hopped on Jamie Foxx's satellite radio show, talking a big game about how he'd take the high road and crush off Cat's threats like they were nothing. He was all about saving face, claiming he wouldn't even entertain the drama. But we all know what really happened, and he was looking for a way to back down without looking weak. Now fast forward to the performance, and guess what? When the music heat was on, Steve tucked his tail. He knew deep down he was no match for Cat's raw, unapologetic energy. Cat called him out for being a coward, not just in the game of comedy, but in the way he handled real talk. He said, please give it up for Steve Harvey. He's one of the best we've ever had. But he don't want no part of this in no shape or form. 
I don't know why he came out here with all his money all spent on these expletive tickets and talked about a lady in the audience for 15 minutes. But he won't talk about me the way. I'm getting ready to talk about his expletive made expletive and he thinks he's the expletive because he was in the expletive in 1968. Expletive, I'm the expletive this evening. But Steve played the wild card by claiming he didn't know who Cat was. In an interview with Fox, he said, I've always been cool with Cat. He said in an interview that back in LA, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who he was when I was on the radio in LA. He hadn't been in any movies or anything and the brother who was just not that known. He was talking about me in the clubs, and I just asked on the radio whoever Cat Williams is to call me. He called me, we straightened it out, we became friends, we've been cool ever since, so I thought. Now that fans are seeing in real time how much of a coward Steve Harvey is, they are taking Cat's side on this one. I'm glad Cat Williams is finally getting his flowers. He's always been real. A truth teller while still making it funny. That's his brilliance in storytelling comedy. Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey wish they could be intellectually funny like that. Another added, Steve Harvey must have been garbage in Ohio as a comedian because we never heard of him until we seen him on the TV. If he was ever known, he would have been booked at a place we have in Ohio called the Front Row. He would have been around town with his face on a billboard somewhere. 3. 50 Cent While everyone on social media seemed to rally behind Cat, there was one surprising twist. Steve found an unexpected ally in none other than 50 Cent. That's right, the same 50 Cent who's been catching heat for cozying up with everyone from Drake to Tyler Perry is now throwing his support behind Steve. You see, it seems 50 Cent's once loyal fan base is starting to turn against him, and it's not just because of his recent cozying up to Steve Harvey. Fans are fired up, noticing a pattern that's rising eyebrows all over. Suddenly, 50 is all about praising Tyler Perry, a far cry from the shade he used to throw. And let's not get started on this newfound loyalty to Drake, despite all those scandalous allegations swirling about Drizzy and his OVO crew. People are talking and let's just say the chatter isn't pretty. Many are accusing 50 of losing his moral compass, saying he's just become another big player in the industry willing to cozy up to whoever cuts the biggest paycheck. Now, if you're not up to speed on the drama between 50 Cent and Tyler Perry, here's the tea. Monique has been vocal about how Oprah and Tyler Perry allegedly blackballed her. According to Monique, it all started when she got refused to do unpaid promo work for Precious unless she was compensated. Her so-called crime was daring to call out the untouchable names in the industry. But why didn't she get the support she deserved? That's the real question and now with 50 Cent seemingly playing both sides, people are wondering who's really pulling the strings. Monique revealed that although she had never worked with Tyler, she did get to see his suspicious dealings during a meeting in Hoodie Awards. She alluded that Tyler wanted to intimidate her into working for free. So I go into Tyler Perry's dressing room and there are about maybe 25 people on Tyler Perry's team. And he does this. All of you might already know that Oprah and Monique had a feud when they were working together on the acclaimed movies Precious. You see, Precious was just an independent movie when she was signed as the main lead. Well, after the movie received great reviews at the Sundance Film Festival, Tyler jumped the bus and signed in as an executive producer. At the time of the incident, Monique was having a hard time as Oprah and other people in the team were trying to force her into doing a press campaign free of charge. She reiterated that Tyler tried to deceive her into doing a campaign by giving her false hope about millions that will come in afterwards. It's important to keep in mind that Monique was young and inexperienced at the time. It was also her first major project. The actress explained that Tyler wanted her to waive her rightful compensation for future projects that had not even materialized yet. Listen. You may really want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar award, your next film is three to five million dollars. Luckily, Monique was not easily manipulated. She knew the wage gap in the industry was real and didn't want to miss out on her fair pay. The comedian stood firm in her stance, saying, Tyler, who are you talking to? I'm a black woman. Where do they pay those type of salaries, brother? I said, what I cannot do, Tyler, is work for free. Mon highlighted that she was not the only one who got the shorter end of the stick. She explained that black women are so devalued in the industry that when someone gives them little over their precious paycheck, they get happy. For those who don't understand, Mon was referring to Taraji P. Henson's statement, where she said, I think the industry knew I was talented, but it's about money. Are you bankable? I had to continuously prove that. I've been trying to prove and improve. I was asking for half a million. I didn't get paid that until I did my first Tyler Perry film. So yeah, Tyler indeed played a direct role in Monique's unjust downfall. 
However, the word has it that 50 Cent knew that Monique was unjustly cancelled and that may be why he made her star in the latest film. But while he indirectly acknowledged Tyler's role, he is currently cozying up to him. So you don't not show up so shit when the invitation come looking like this, man. Now, almost 11 years ago to the day of what the f***? We need to make more money. Get the f*** out of my office, man. Get the f*** out of my office. We need more money. I'm coming to that shit. I don't give a f*** what I gotta do. I'm cancel my schedule. As if cozying up to Tyler Perry wasn't enough, 50 Cent set the entire rap world on fire by siding with Drake in his explosive feud with Kendrick Lamar. While Kendrick has most of the rap elite firmly in his corner, 50 shocked everyone when he posted an Instagram photo of him and Drake chilling in Toronto like they didn't even have a care in the world. I told you leave him alone. Now he's spinning on all y'all. Everybody must die. Now, this move didn't just get fans talking, it had them speculating. What's 50 really cooking up with Drake? Is this just a power play to expand his power empire, or is there something deeper going on? To make things even wilder, this video of him laughing it up over drinks started making rounds online, practically daring the hip-hop community to react. And boy, did they react. Whispers are spreading fast that 50's next big project could be something that taps into Drake's producing and acting skills, but here's the twist. Many are viewing this alliance as a betrayal of epic proportions. 50 Cent has always been linked to the West Coast, with his mentor Dr. Dre firmly in Kendrick's camp. And now, after Drake has spent months disrespecting the West Coast and even throwing shade at legends like Tupac, 50's new bromance with Drizzy is sparking outrage. This move isn't just questionable, it's flat-out dangerous for 50's legacy. Drake and 50 can definitely cook something up together. It makes me sad that 50 is a great songwriter, but he's not in demand anymore like he used to be. At one point, he was the radio darling, but his time has passed. Can't believe his debut album was already 20 years ago. The timing is suspicious too, especially with those ugly PDF allegations hanging over Drake and his crew. Some are speculating that 50 is playing with fire, aligning himself with someone whose reputation has been under scrutiny. And that's it for today. See you at the next one. Goodbye.